This is John for Global Woman Sports Radio. Today, I have the pleasure of being on the beat with Savannah Wiley, Oregon State University softball player. How are you? I'm good. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. You are doing well. You got your first hit of the season, a nice double over the weekend. Yeah, it was it was fun. It was a lot of fun. I love the, the head first dive. You, you know, you, you got to love a head first dive in the second base. That was awesome. Yeah, it was. I was honestly not expecting it that, but I was like, I feel like I have better reach. So I'm just going to go for it. <laughs> oh, yeah. You got to love the head first dive. That's that's like the ultimate in hustle and softball. Yeah. But let, let's take it back, if, if you don't mind. Um, when did you start playing softball? Well, I started playing baseball around three years old. And I don't know, my mom just kind of, we kind of stayed with it. I liked that sport the most. So when I was around eight years old, I switched over to softball and I've just been playing ever since. And now you had a little bit of um, trouble in high school. You, you had some uh, unfortunate in- incidents of bullying. Would you talk a little bit about that and how you overcame that? Right. Um, You know, Honestly, like looking back on it now, like everything happens like for like a reason in my life, at least. And I know it like was there to like teach me lessons or like, you know, make me a little stronger. Um, but yeah, in high school, it was definitely hard. It was definitely hard being like different and coming into new schools. I transferred twice. So it was really hard on me at first. I didn't really get along with people because I didn't talk much or like, I just didn't click well with people. And, you know, it happens. It's life. You don't get along with everybody. But I think for me, what really helped me overcome, like all that was really my faith. My faith really um, got me through like all my tough seasons and everything. And I think just like wanting to play the game and wanting to play at the highest level, it just kind of kept me where I was in that moment and just kind of kept my head straight, even though I was going through a lot, like behind the scenes, a lot of things people didn't get to see that I had to go through, um, especially with my mental health. My mental health played a big part in that. But um, I think one thing that really did help me was, like, my love for the game and wanting to play at a super high level and always wanting to be the best no matter what and always wanting to compete. So I think that's really how I overcame it throughout all throughout high school. You know, I think it's important because, you know, a lot of people think, uh, you know, a high school athlete, you're popular, you're, you know, you're not part of the bullying, but bullying can happen to anybody. And it's, it's, it's important, you know, I'm, I'm really uh, glad that you were, you have spoken out about it and told your story and serve as a role model for other younger people who are getting bullied because it can happen to anybody. Yeah, it can. It really can. You never expect it. And I, I'm kind of skipping around here a little bit, but this, this kind of relates to it. Um, you've got a, a, a bit of a clothing line going. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. <laughs> And I know it's, yeah. it's, it's the Watley crew. I know that. I actually, I'm going to get one of those shirts. I, I got to join the Watley crew. And then you've got, you've, you've got a mental uh, health awareness shirt. How did all that come to be? Uh, well, I have suffered most of my life, especially in high school, with mental health. Um, I think for me, I just, I felt like there wasn't really a lot of people talking about it back then. I felt so like, I felt like I was like really alone. And I wasn't, I wasn't really like understanding why, you know, I felt that way or like nobody was saying anything, but I was, it's become such a prominent thing now, like, especially with COVID and not being able to play and not being able to see our families. Like now people are starting to speak out about it. And I was like, well, for me, I want to be able to share my story and be able to reach other people that felt just like me throughout high school, felt like me throughout college. I'm still going through it. I'm not perfect. Um, but yeah, I started uh, my brand uh, enough um, because no matter who you are, no matter what you're going through, like you are enough. You're worth it. You're worth being here. Your life is worth living. And I think for me, that's where I struggled a lot too. I just never felt like I was enough for anything. I felt like I was never good enough in softball. I wasn't good enough for my grades. And then came to a point where I was just like, I just feel like I'm done with everything. I don't really want to be, a, I don't want to, I don't do this anymore. You know, it got really hard and I just had to keep reminding myself like I am enough. And I think when I found my like identity really in Christ, like he kept telling me like, you are enough. Like no matter what you do, you are enough. So that's why I started my brand. You know, no, I love, I love it. I love the message. And you know, here's a little secret. You know, I'm a lot older than you and I still struggle with the same, same type of feelings, but it's, it's, it's awesome that you are addressing it now at such a young age and are, are put, pushing through. And it's great that you have such a deep faith is, is faith strong within your whole family. I would say it's strong within um, like my immediate family, my mom and my sister. 
um I always grew up in Christian school and like or like a Catholic I went to a Catholic school here in public school but I always grew up in a Christian school I went to church um but it didn't really it wasn't really like a like you know in my whole family it's not really a big thing but my mom has always like instilled in us that God's always been there for us and you know I've seen it in my own life like especially now being at Oregon State never expected to be at Oregon State never expected to be playing this year and didn't expect honestly a lot and it's, God has just blessed me with so much and I was like if this isn't God I don't know what it is like it's it's been insane and it's so cool to see how he works now why do you say you didn't expect to be playing this year I had like a few things go on in the beginning of the year um I had a few talks with my coaches how to do with mental health how to do my health how to do it like a few other things that go on you know obviously behind the scenes but um I expected to like you know kind of do the bare minimum I didn't really expect to like come in and play I that's why I, like when my I was hit they put me in to hit I was like oh my goodness <laughs> I wasn't expecting it I was so I was so excited and I remember like my mom came into town last week and we just like prayed about it she was here while my team was gone but I was at home and we we're just praying about it and I was like God you know I really want to play <laughs> but you know you're willing my life be done like, not not what I want what you want and whatever you have for me like I'll take and like this, this weekend when I got called pay I was like I was shocked like I was beyond shocked but I was I felt so like excited and blessed to even be in that situation and was your mom at the game or had she left by then uh yeah she was at at the game awesome. <laughs> she was definitely the only person I can't hear a lot of people or anything really if I'm getting like yelled at by people you know this and that even my coaches like I was like unfortunately I don't really hear you guys I'm sorry <laughs> but um but my mom is always the voice like I can hear and I know she was like going crazy and the first time I got my career like that was the first person I looked to like I said I probably shouldn't have looked there but that was the first person I looked to uh just because my mom has been with me through like it all last year high school this year, everything. So, no, it actually answered one of my questions. I was going to ask you if, um, if when you're on the field, if you could actually hear the fans or or specific ones. But you answered that, and that is awesome. That's cool that you heard your mom, and it's it's awesome that she was able to see it. Yeah. Now, would would you say that? Um, I, I know the team at Oregon State. Uh, you guys are off to a you're off to a really good start in conference. It's a little rough early, but it's it's a little rough earlier yeah. before a conference. But you're having a really good season overall. Is um is Oregon your biggest rival or is there another team that's your biggest rival? Historically, it's our biggest rival. Uh yeah. I, I honestly it's the Pac-12 is the Pac-12. Everybody's rivals. We all want to win. It's one of the it's the best conference in the country, um, with the best talent. So it's a, it's fun. It's actually really fun to, to be in this conference. I don't think we have I think Oregon State as a whole, yes, Oregon is our rival. It's always been our rival. But um, I think everybody at this point is like, we have the targets on our back for the upcoming program like this year. So I think everybody's kind of aiming for us and we're kind of just, you know, taking each game as it comes and just playing. Well, it's all fun. <laughs> what uh, What is your favorite position to play defensively? Um. You know, honestly, it used to be second base. Uh, I didn't usually, I didn't really play shortstop till like my junior year of high school. And then I kind of started liking shortstop because uh, I feel like that's just really the leader on the field. Yeah, the pitcher, the catcher, and like the shortstop or like the voices of the field. And I would say I'm pretty loud. So <laughs> that became one of my favorite places. Um, yeah. Aside from softball, what do you do to relax? What do you do to get away from softball? Honestly, I, you know, I hang out with friends. I go to church, obviously. I love to play guitar. I play my acoustic guitar all the time. And I sing. I don't sing a lot. Any, I don't sing a lot, but, like, I sing here and there while playing. Um, I'm trying to think. What else? Corvallis is a very, you know, sometimes I'll drive around. Maybe not the, like the gas prices right now but a little high. I used to drive around a lot and just like sightsee because I'm not from so if you were gonna if you were gonna play your guitar and sing what type of music would we be hearing it, it ranges honestly there's like old school r and it's like in my vocal range I would say I guess or just anything anything I like to hear anything I think that catches my ear 
No, I, I watched an interview with you. It was a really good interview. And unfortunately, I forgot the, the, the gentleman's name that was doing it. But at the end of it, he asked you a bunch of uh, um, rapid fire questions. And there was, uh, I'm just going to ask you a couple of those questions. You mentioned the place you'd like to uh, visit would be Santorini in Greece. Any, yes. any specific reason other than obviously it's a beautiful place, but is there any other specific reason for it? Um, I don't really have a specific reason. I just think it's so beautiful. I've seen so many pictures. Like if I'm like looking up a, like a place, like that's always the first place I'm looking up or I don't know. I feel like that's always somewhere I wanted to go. It's so pretty. It's so beautiful. It looks so beautiful. I really want to go someday, hopefully. Well, my, I have a, a, a lifelong Greek friend who uh, is from around there and he, he's always trying to get me to go visit there at some point. So it, it's, you've picked a great place. But I do have to, I do have to, uh, I do have to uh, find fault with you for one, one of your answers, though. I, I love chicken McNuggets, but ketchup? Ketchup, yes. I mean, honey mustard, barbecue sauce, blue cheese, but ketchup? I think it's very classic. I have a very um, simple palate. I eat, like, chicken nuggets, mac and cheese, ketchup, like, solid, solid palate. Wait, you're not putting the ketchup on the mac and cheese, too, are you? Uh, not the mac and cheese, just, okay. just the chicken nuggets. <laughs> okay, just checking on that. No, well, um, who do you guys play this this coming weekend? We play St. Mary's on Thursday, and then we have a series against Cal. So, what like what does your typical week look like? How much practice do you does a, a student athlete do during a week? It ranges, honestly. In the fall, we have a lot twenty hour weeks. Um, we work out, train. We still have physical therapy and stuff if you need it. There's a bunch of treatment, so. I can't even, I don't even think I could put like a number on it a week. Like it's, it takes up a hefty part of your schedule and you know, it's a lot, but in season, oh my goodness. I, this was my first weekend really playing. So I was like already seeing the time commitment with like the full season. I was like, oh my goodness, my teammates are so cool. I don't know how they do it. <laughs> I'm doing it. And after you're done playing it, obviously you have, you still have plenty of time left to play in college, but after you're done, what, what do you want to do in life? I, I read that you, you uh, had interest in nursing. You have interest in coaching. Um, yeah. Either one of those or both of those, or what, what are your plans? Uh, well, I've always planned to be a pediatric nurse. I love kids. I've always worked with kids. Like, I'm just as energetic as kids, so, <laughs> so I get along very well. Um, that, but I would also, yeah, like, just, they have, like, 12-hour shifts, three days, 12-hour shifts. So it's, like, the other the rest of the week I'll have free. So I would like to coach if possible, you know, share like what I've learned in college or just like life. I don't know what age I'd want to coach, but. That was my next see. question. <laughs> you beat me to all my questions here. That's awesome. <laughs> um, I, well, I would say I, the, the way you're talking, you probably would like to coach young kids, but you know, that could change too. And within a couple of years, you never know how, how things go. Yeah, I, I, do, I, so I do love young kids. I think in the sport aspect, I'm a little nervous to coach young kids just because I'm very intense and I like to compete. <laughs> so I think I, I have to coach a little bit old, maybe like 14, if not 14 to college at some point, yeah, okay. hopefully. And do you, have any, um, do you have any softball role models, any any? softball players from the past that you look up to or, or kind of try to emulate their style? Oh, my coach, Coach Berg. Uh, I've always looked up to Coach Berg, one of the best softballers in the game. My goodness. Debbie Nelson, she taught me when I was younger and I used to be like starstruck when she was teaching me. I was like, oh my goodness. I've met so many people like through the sport, Jenny Topping, not specifically in like her position, just like how like intense she is and she's just oh my goodness I'm trying to think of other names I have I was just thinking of I was just thinking of it before this too and I'm like blanking <laughs> just like um, I'm oh Lauren Chamberlain so oh. fun to watch so she's so fun to watch I loved watching her play but you know there's so many people to look up to even current players in college like this sport is definitely on the, the uphill going uphill Lauren. right now Lauren Chamberlain started a whole new uh, professional softball league. Uh, She's like the, the commissioner. Exactly. And 
you know, for me, the more softball that's out there, the better. You know, I, 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 I you know, I'm, I'm, it's like, uh, it was 28 degrees yesterday and I was out watching Northwestern softball. So cold, it doesn't matter. But be before I let you go, tell everybody where they can find out about you and your brand. Oh, uh, it's in my bio on my Instagram at Savannah Watt. Um, you can go to our team website, our team roster. I should be on there. Um, yeah, it's where my brand's at. Um, I'll probably be posting more about it, especially now that I'm starting to play a little bit and everybody can start, you know, maybe representing the Wally crew. Sure. Will there be more shirts coming out? More new designs? I've actually talked about uh, like hats and different apparel, like things as we're going into summer. So we'll see. See how it goes. Different awesome. colors. Well, you, you know, I'll be, I'll be, uh, I'll be jumping on the the Wiley crew as soon as, as soon as I'm done with here. I'll be ordering the shirt. So you, you got a new member awesome. of the crew. <laughs> so man, I really appreciate your time. It was a lot of fun talking to you. We'll be following the uh, the Oregon State Beavers, and and hopefully you guys will uh, have a great season. And and uh, hopefully uh, we'll see more of you rounding the bases and diving into other bases. Just don't break your fingers or anything. Yeah. No. <laughs> no more. No injuries. <laughs> Thank you, Savannah. You have a great night. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Go Beavs. Yeah, exactly. Go. <laughs> Thanks. Bye-bye.